You throw a baseball or a rock by applying a force through a distance. The displacement from an initial location, xi, yi, zi, to a final location, xf, yf, zf, is given by the displacement vector d equals xf minus xi, i hat, plus yf minus yi, j hat, plus zf minus zi, k hat. The tail of the displacement vector is at the initial location. The tip is at the final location. In physics, we say that mechanical work, W, is done on a mass when a vector force, F, is applied through a vector displacement, D. The definition is W equals F dot D equals F D cosine theta where theta is the smallest angle between the two vectors, f and d, when they are placed tail to tail. Starting with the simplest case, that cosine theta equals 1. Replacing force f with mass times acceleration, ma. When the acceleration is constant, we can replace it with v squared minus v0 squared over 2d. Canceling the d's gives 1 half mv squared minus one-half mv0 squared, which we'll say is the change in kinetic energy, delta k, equals kf minus ki, where the very important quantity k is the kinetic energy, one-half mv squared. Only the component of the force that points in the direction of the displacement contributes to the mechanical work done, and this portion changes the kinetic energy of motion of the mass. Positive work increases kinetic energy, but negative work decreases kinetic energy. When you do work on a mass to put it into motion, then that moving mass possesses energy stored in the form of kinetic energy of motion. We can believe that it would take energy to bend the metal of a can. Throw a rock against the can and the metal will bend. So the moving rock must have possessed energy. The stationary rock does not bend the metal. Force and displacement are vectors, but work is a scalar. The velocity vector, v, includes a magnitude or speed and a direction. The portion of the force that lies in the direction of the displacement will change the speed of the object, and the perpendicular portion will change the direction of motion. Work has units of force times distance, which is newtons times meters, or joules. This unit is named after James Prescott Joule, who found that heat was a form of energy. When casually speaking, the phrase mechanical work is often shortened to work, but remember that the physics term work has a more specific meaning than does the English word work. Mechanical work includes the product of force and displacement, so it is equivalent to apply either a large force through a small distance or apply a small force through a large distance. For example, please calculate the mechanical work done by a 100 newton force moving through a distance of 1 meter. And calculate the mechanical work done by a 1 newton force moving through a distance of 100 meters. Both are 100 newton meters or joules. Notice that mechanical work is zero when theta equals 90 degrees or when the displacement d is zero. For example, no mechanical work is done when applying a force against a wall that does not move. When doing a push-up or a pull-up, we know that we are doing mechanical work because we feel a force in our arms as we push through the distance d. We also do mechanical work when we lift a mass up a certain height. Please calculate the work done in throwing a 150 gram baseball by applying a force of 150 newtons, which is 34 pounds, through a distance of 75 centimeters. The force lies entirely along the displacement, so theta equals zero. 
we have work equals FD cosine theta. equals 150 newtons times 0.75 meter equals 110 joules. People can do a work of thousands of joules, but machines do work in millions of joules, like this snow plow. To slowly lift a mass upward, you must apply an upward force, F, that matches the downward weight, mg, that also acts on the mass. Your force points upward, and the displacement is also upward, so the angle between the two vectors, F and D, is zero degrees. We have your force, F equals mg, so the mechanical work done by you is W equals F D cosine theta equals M G D cosine of zero equals M G D. In problems involving gravity, we usually write the height using the symbol H rather than D. So we have work equal M G H. The raised rock must possess mechanical energy because if you let go, It falls on the can and bends the metal. A mass that is at height h above the ground possesses stored gravitational potential energy, u sub g equals mgh, which is measured in joules. We say that the mechanical work done in raising the mass to height h has been converted into stored gravitational potential energy, ug. Mechanical energy is equivalent to mechanical work. A tiny portion of the gravitational potential energy that was stored in the raised rock is converted into a nanojoule of sound energy during the collision. Sound energy is tiny. Our ears are just very sensitive. The sound energy that is contained in the words that you spoke throughout the last year would boil just one cup of water. The mechanical work done by U in raising the rock was W sub U equals plus MGH. What was the work done on the rock by the force of gravity? The angle between this downward force MG and the displacement is 180 degrees. So the work done by gravity equals MG D cosine 180 equals minus mgh because the cosine of 180 is minus 1. The work done by gravity is the negative of the work done against gravity. Please calculate the work done against gravity by you in raising your mass vertically through 35 meters. You can use any value for mass that you like. For a mass of 65 kilograms, which is 140 pounds. Work equals plus mgh equals 65 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared times 35 meters equals 22,000 joules. Walking down that hill results in a mechanical work of minus mgh. Walking up the hill and then back down that hill results in a net mechanical work of zero. When walking on level ground, you are doing no mechanical work against gravity. But how much food energy does it take an animal to operate muscles while walking on level ground? Any animal, from an ant to an elephant, uses 0.9 joules per kilogram for each meter they travel. For example, a 65 kilogram person uses 0.9 joules per kilogram meter times 65 kilograms equals 58.5 joules per meter. Walking 1,000 meters uses 1,000 meters times 58.5 joules per meter equals 58,500 joules. We'll come back to this later when we discuss food and calories.
The work done to stretch a spring becomes elastic energy that is stored in the spring. The force needed to stretch a spring against its restoring force is F equals plus Kx. This force is not constant. It varies with x. The total work done by a varying force is equal to the area under the force versus x graph. The area under this straight line graph has the shape of a triangle. Since the area of a triangle is half the rectangular area of kx times x, we have work equals one half kx squared. This mechanical work is considered to have been converted into stored elastic potential energy, U sub S equals one half Kx squared. We'll point out that the work done by the spring is the negative of the work done on the spring. The total mechanical energy of a mass is kinetic energy, which is one half mv squared plus stored gravitational potential energy, U sub G, which is MGH, plus stored elastic potential energy, U sub S, which is one half Kx squared. Each problem contains a mix of two or three of these energy flavors. In each chapter through the year, we'll add more flavors of mechanical energy to this total. Energy is a scalar quantity. Mechanical energy and mechanical work are interchangeable. Richard Feynman says that it is hard to explain what energy is, but it appears in many forms, including heat, light, chemical, electrical, motion, sound, magnetic, and nuclear energy and such. The total energy of the universe has been estimated to be 10 to the 68 joules. This was the energy of the Big Bang. The total energy of the universe never changes, but tiny portions of this total are constantly transforming from one form of energy to another. Physics, chemistry, and biology consist of little besides the flow of energy. Some of the energy of the Big Bang now comprises you. Your body operations convert about 100 joules of energy per second. So your share of the energy of the universe is 10 to the minus 66. If you make 10 to the 66 copies of yourself, then you could hog all of the energy of the universe for yourself. A launched block travels uphill along an inclined plane until gravity and sliding friction bring the mass to a halt. The mass is 0 0.25 kilograms. The angle of the incline is alpha equals 18 degrees. The coefficient of kinetic friction is mu k equals 0 0.9. The length of the displacement is 0 0.65 meters. While the mass is moving up the hill, the forces that act on it are the downward weight, the normal force that's perpendicular to the incline, and the kinetic frictional force, which is always Fk equals mu k n. On this inclined plane, the normal force is mg cosine alpha, so the kinetic frictional force is Fk equals mu k mg cosine alpha. The displacement vector points uphill. The tail of the displacement vector is at the beginning of the motion. The tip of the displacement vector is at the final location of the mass. So the displacement vector points up the hill. The force of gravity points straight to the center of the earth. While the mass is in motion up the hill, what is the mechanical work done by the gravitational force on the mass? The angle between the displacement vector and the weight, when they are placed tail to tail, is theta equals 90 degrees plus alpha. The work done by gravity on the mass is the force mg times the displacement d 
times the cosine of the angle between the two vectors when they are placed tail to tail, which is 90 plus alpha, and we get minus 0.492 joules, which decreases the kinetic energy, one half mv squared, of the mass. The work done by a person to lift the mass vertically through height h equals mgh, but h is d sine alpha, so we get 0.492 joules. We do the same mechanical work against gravity, whether lifting straight up or traveling along an inclined hill. For conservative forces in general, the work done is independent of the path. The incline allows a smaller force, but over a larger distance. Our knees and back tell us that it is easier to carry the mass up the incline than it is to lift it straight up the edge of the ramp. The normal force points perpendicular to the incline. Here, the normal force and the displacement vector are placed tail to tail. While the mass is moving up the hill, what is the mechanical work done by the normal force on the mass? The angle between the displacement d and the normal force is theta equals 90 degrees. So the work done by the normal force on the mass is W sub n equals n times d times cosine of 90 degrees equals zero joules. The kinetic frictional force points down the incline. We see that there is 180 degree angle between the displacement vector and the frictional force vector when they are placed tail to tail. As the mass moves up the hill, what is the mechanical work done on the mass by the frictional force? We have W sub F equals the frictional force times the displacement times the cosine of the angle between those two vectors. But the frictional force F equals mu kmg cosine alpha. So we get minus 1.36 joules, which also reduces the kinetic energy of the mass. The work done by friction depends on the length of the displacement, so friction is said to be a non-conservative force. The total work done on the mass is the work done by gravity plus the work done by the normal force plus the work done by friction equals the change in kinetic energy of the mass. The change delta is always final minus initial, so delta K equals Kf minus Ki, but the final kinetic energy is zero because the mass is not moving, so we have minus Ki. In this example, we have minus 0.492 plus zero minus 1.36 equals minus 1.85 equals minus Ki in joules. So the initial kinetic energy of 1.85 joules was converted into work done against friction and gravity.